Hi, it's Steph, and today I want to talk about um, the first four Eddie Flynn books by Steve Kavanaugh. Um, if you go looking for the books by Steve Kavanaugh and you get results for Steve, Stephen, Steve Mearns, don't fret, it's the same guy. Kavanaugh is his pen name. Um, so <laughs> I read the books a little bit out of order. My library only has three of the first four in uh, any form. They haven't been audiobook. And so uh, I started with the book called 13 and it's uh, got the numbers one and three in the title. It's, it's kind of cool. And um, this one is probably his most popular one. At least it seems to be the most advertised <laughs> that I've seen. So uh, I don't want to go really in depth and, and spoil it. I think this is the, his books are worth not spoiling, but 13 is so good. So I'm going to do my reviews a little bit out of order. I'm going to do them in the order that I read them. So I'm going to talk about 13 first. And um, I had no idea going in that it was the fourth of seven books. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, and I think you can read them out of order. I like to read things in order. So had I known, I would have started with one. But uh, I think they're, they're good enough that they stand alone if you read them alone. He, uh, Kavanaugh gives you enough information about Eddie Flynn and, and the other people without like big exposition dumping. So um, <clears throat> I, anyway, so anyway, it's, it's fine. It's fine to read them out of order. Uh, Eddie Flynn is a con man turned lawyer. And in the book 13, his wife is really unhappy and she's left him. He has a daughter who I think is 10, 11, 12 maybe um, in this book. I can't remember exactly how old she is in each of the books. But um, some dangerous things have happened in the earlier books. And so she takes their daughter and she leaves him. So he lives in New York and he works in Manhattan mostly. And in this book, he gets recruited to help with the defense of a movie star named Robert Solomon, whose wife and security man were murdered. So Flynn has a knack for kind of knowing when his client is innocent. He's in uh, one of the first, one of the earlier books, he kind of goes into one reason why he fights so hard for his clients, um, because he made a mistake early on in his law career and a guilty man got off and so and he's kind of feels responsible for that so he's really careful and he has a good brain and he tends to be right when he thinks that someone is innocent so in spite of a stack of evidence pointing to Solomon as the killer Flynn is convinced that he didn't do it so as Flynn navigates um, cops who hate him and beat him up at one point and prepping for his part of the case, which the lead attorney, the lead attorney assures him that he is just there to point the finger at the cops setting Solomon up. That's all they want him to do. We also get scenes from the real killer whose name is Joshua Kane. Uh, we get scenes from his point of view, which um, is interesting. And Kavanaugh doesn't do this in all of the other books, at least not the others that I've read. So he, Cain is uh, kind of tricking and killing his way onto the jury of the Solomon case. So Cain is a really interesting and unique serial killer. He has this rare condition that prevents him from feeling any pain, um, as well as like the, you know, what you would expect, the sociopathy and psychopathy. Um, so it, it, when he chooses a juror to um, pretend to be, to take over the identity of, he breaks his own nose so that he'll look more like the man whose identity he's stealing. He kills a couple of other people in order to be on the jury instead of just being an alternate. And he also takes out a couple of jurors that he thinks will be likely to exonerate Robert Solomon. Um, one through trickery. Uh, so as they're preparing to begin jury selection, the defendant, Robert Solomon, collapses into an epileptic seizure in public. So the film studio has a deal with him that if his epilepsy was kept secret or like that it had to be kept secret, they didn't want the press to know about it. Once, if the press knew about it, if the press, like if it comes out, then the studio is no longer going to represent him. So the studio refuses to pay any more for his defense 
and the high-powered lead attorney named Rudy Carp bails out of the case. So Flynn takes over as lead defense attorney, and he's determined to help Solomon. So Flynn hires a friend named Harper. She's a former FBI agent turned private investigator, and she's super smart. And she, they eventually convince another FBI, FBI, an actual FBI agent named Delaney to help them. When they begin to realize that the killer is already on the FBI's radar. So this is kind of cool. Um, the killer is known as Dollar Bill because he always leaves behind dollar bills on the victim on the bodies of his victims. And the dollar bills are marked with, uh, like, marked on the arrow star and the olive leaves on the great seal. So in the case that Eddie Flynn is working, the dollar had been folded into the shape of an origami butterfly and shoved into the second victim's mouth. And the killer usually leaves DNA and or fingerprints of the person that he's framing for the murders. So in the Solomon case, there happens to be a second man's DNA on the bill, on the dollar, and this is really key, so I don't want to spoil how it comes back at the end. Um, it's pretty cool. I think Kavanaugh is quite a good author, and he's really good at like weaving these interesting, tricky things together. So the dollars ultimately lead to Delaney agreeing to help Flynn and Harper as they try to unravel who might be the real killer in this case, even though all the evidence points to Solomon. So it flips to the point of view of the killer, and it, and it's kind of interesting because he's like cold and cruel, and he feels no remorse for any of the bodies that he's leaving behind him. Um, so I've read a lot of legal thrillers and mysteries over the years, and this is definitely one of the better books of the genre that I've read. In comparison to some of the um, books I've been reading recently, this was far superior, I read a couple of Frieda McFadden's psychological so-called thrillers recently, and one of my complaints about them is a lack of like evidence and police procedure. They're, they're really fluffy. They're almost like YA-level books. Um, I think the best cop thrillers and crime thrillers include, you know, kind of that, that like how are we getting like what's the evidence and how is it being evaluated and and what's what's the stuff that we don't know that gets re revealed you know later that exonerates or or proves who the killer was or whatever um i like to see the whole story unfold a little bit more so i so this has been like a breath of fresh air to find these kavanaugh books and i think he does a masterful job of weaving together the story and the evidence and the points of view of eddie flynn and kane as the book unfolds, um, I love the way the evidence was laid out for us as Eddie and his team are like, they like catch on to one thing after another and Kane's methods and how he was ultimately undone is really cool. The reveal is great. It's excellent. Um, as far as the content goes, the book is, is clean. It's a little gruesome and gritty. It's not, uh, sexy or super cussy. So that's good. Um, and the thing I liked best about it is just the twisty way the evidence worked together. And now that I've read a few others of um, the Eddie Flynn books, this is something that Kavanaugh really excels at. Uh, everything kind of just builds to the reveal of who the killer really is. So, And this one is a little bit unique because you know from the beginning that Solomon is innocent because, you know, Eddie Kane is a big part of the story and we know that he's made his way onto the jury. That's in the advertising for the book. So it's worth not spoiling. I don't want to tell you too much more about it, um, but it's compelling. It's unique and I, and it's pretty intense. Um, imagining the killer being on the juries of the murders he's committed is pretty cool. Um, I think it's a unique premise and the execution is superb. I just think it really worked. He did a great job with that book. So after reading that one, I went back because my library does have books one and two on audiobooks, so I found those. And um, I decided I better go back and read the first three in order. So the first book is called The Defense. And this book, of course, introduces Eddie Flynn as the former con artist turned lawyer. Um, and about one year prior to this book, he decided to stop practicing law. So because this is the first book, we do get some exposition, but we don't we don't really get to witness what led to that decision. Like there's not a big flashback scene or like it's, it's, he just references things in his narration. So he's forced back into the courtroom though. Um, when the Russian mob kidnaps his 10 year old daughter, Amy. So she's 10 in the first book. Um, 
And they coerce him into defending Oleg Volchek, who is the leader of the Russian mob in New York. Um, Vol Volchek's muscle man, named Arturus, forces Eddie to wear this jacket that has a bomb inside it and get it into the courtroom. And um, Volchek is accused of ordering a hit, which of course he did. And Flynn has like 48 hours to get him acquitted or they're going to kill his daughter. So in the meantime, uh, you know, so all this pressure is building and Flynn's freaking out and uh, his wife doesn't know that his daughter's been kidnapped because she thinks she's at like a school camp or something. So they timed this very well and they, the, the, re the whole reason they even know who Eddie Flynn is is because they worked with his former partner. Um, um, who he no longer works with because it turned out not to be a good thing. So Volchek's enforcer, Benny, who's the man um, who actually committed the, the murder, instead of just taking the fall for the murder or completely flipping and going into protective custody, he just decided to uh, testify against Volchek in exchange for a lighter sentence, which is really odd. And they, they talk about why that's kind of a strange choice um, and it's one example, I think, of what a good writer Steve Cavanaugh is because there are like layers to this mystery of why are people doing these things and what's really going on and who's really involved. And Flynn has to kind of sort it all out and figure it out in time to save his daughter's life. So the plan is to have Flynn plant the bomb under the witness chair and then they will detonate it, killing the witness. And they also are planning to have Flynn take the fall for the bomb. So there's a lot more to the story. This book has a lot of elements of mystery as well as being a legal thriller. And this story is told, of course, from Eddie's point of view. And his tension and anxiety about his daughter and trying to figure out what's really going on really draw the reader in. It's fast paced. Um, it's exciting. I think it's really interesting. Like with 13, I liked how Kavanaugh unravels the story and the clues that Eddie notices along the way, um, only for it to all come together and make sense at the end. So I do recommend reading The Defense, whether you start there or you start like I did with 13. Uh, it's an excellent book. I think Kavanaugh has a really good handle on writing courtroom thrillers. And the non-courtroom scenes are just as interesting and exciting. So you really feel the threat hanging over Eddie as he tries to work with the Rub Russian mobsters. He tries to convince them to let him work the case without killing Benny or Amy or anyone else. And the mobsters are legitimately scary, which I'm sure in real life, the Russian mob is terrifying. So I definitely recommend reading The Defense. So the second book um, about Eddie Flynn is called The Plea. And it's a little bit different. This time, instead of Eddie's daughter, Amy, being in danger, his wife, Christine, is in trouble with the law. So she unwittingly signed an agreement when she was hired by this prestigious law firm of Harland and Sinton, um, they've been laundering money for many years. And because her signature is on these specific papers, she is culpable. So the CIA and the, and the FBI come and talk to Eddie Flynn and the CIA guy is kind of a jerk and he doesn't seem to care about anything except um, getting, you know, what he wants done in this case. And he is using Christine as leverage to get Flynn involved in a murder trial. So, uh, Christine, you know, Eddie doesn't want her to be arrested. He doesn't want her to be in trouble for not, she signed these things, not even knowing, you know, anything about the crime. So the CIA convinced him to work as the lawyer for this tech genius guy who also happens to be the owner of the biggest social media platform called Reeler. Uh, his name is David Child. So David has been accused of murdering his girlfriend, Clara Reese, who was shot in the head so many times that like her face is destroyed. So the CIA want Eddie to convince David to take a plea agreement in exchange for giving them access to the algorithm that he wrote for Harland and Sinton, because they've been using this algorithm to shuttle money around untraced. So there's like a huge amount of money. They want to take down Harland and Sinton and they need David to do that. And it, you know, it just happens that he, it looks like he killed his girlfriend. So when Eddie meets David, he quickly realizes that this, this like nervous, anxious, awkward man is innocent. There's no way he's the guy on camera. Well, I mean, there's no way that he's the guy who killed his girlfriend and then walked out of the apartment as calm as he was on the camera. 
So um, as with his other books, there's a lot more here than meets the eye. And Eddie quickly begins putting together the clues like, like a puzzle. And he finds evidence of David's innocence and he starts to uncover what's really going on. And it's another high paced roller coaster ride of a book and I just really enjoyed it. Um, I had some idea who the true bad guy of the story was, but the reveal was still compelling and surprising and I really liked it. So um, one, of, one funny thing to note is that Steve Cavanaugh set these Eddie Flynn stories in New York, but Cavanaugh himself is Irish. And so sometimes some British isms sneak through, such as calling a flashlight a torch and saying like uh, someone is, is called Eddie Flynn instead of named Eddie Flynn, like we usually say in the US. So that I think it's fine. It's not really distracting. I just think it's funny. And uh, there might be some readers out there who aren't super familiar with British terminology versus, versus US terminology, but um, it, I think it's cool. I think it's great. Good for him. <laughs> Keep writing. So, all right. So I finished um, book three, The Liar, last night. And I'm burning through these books really fast because I just really enjoy them. And I had to find this in ebook format because I couldn't, my library doesn't have it. Um, I feel like these books manage to be fast paced and detailed and they always really keep you guessing. Eddie Flynn is smart, he's tricky, he's wily, he's just a really fun protagonist. So since I read book four first, having finished The Liar, I'm now all caught up to, to the, you know, the first four books. Um, so in this book, Eddie is recruited to help out an old friend who many years ago when Eddie was a teenager, this, this friend helped him get started in the con game. Um, his name is Leonard Howell and Howell's teenage daughter has been kidnapped. So Howell happens to be, he happens to own his own business, which does hostage negotiation and kidnapping negotiation and resolution. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so this is the book where Eddie meets FBI, FBI agent Harper, who I referenced in the book 13. She's great. Um, I like her a lot. She's sassy and strong and fearless and she's really entertaining. So things for Howell go from bad to worse when the ransom drop for his daughter turns out to be a ruse and then he ends up being charged with his daughter's murder. There's all this evidence. But is she really dead? We don't know. Who's the kidnapper? And what does he want? So the book has some flashback scenes, which is a little bit of a change for an Eddie Flynn book. But um, I think each book kind of has their own unique things. Like 13 has point of view of the killer and things like that. Uh, it really works here. It's not overdone or heavy handed. Um, it just kind of is outlines a little bit of, you know, this, there's a secondary mystery going on. So this is another book where Eddie Flynn flies from one problem to another. He gets out of, he, he gets out of physical altercations using his wits and what he learned in the boxing gym when he was growing up. And he has sleepless nights. I swear I've never read a character who sleeps less than him. <laughs> but it all helps to build the suspense. So like the other books in the series, I don't really want to spoil anything. I think they're worth reading. Um, this one has some surprising twists along the way and people who aren't who they say they are. Uh, there's deception from multiple angles. And I appreciated that none of Eddie's family were in danger in this one and neither really like he wasn't being accused of a crime here. Um, so that was a little bit refreshing after the first three, uh, but, or the, the other, the first two. So we just got to kind of ride along as he figures out things and solves the mystery. I think Kavanaugh does a fantastic job of we weaving together his strong protagonist with an equally strong supporting cast of characters. Um, his good friend, Judge Harry Ford, shows up a lot in the books. Um, and there are attorneys and judges and cops and FBI agents and, and of course, the, the accused and their family and people. And I feel like the characters feel fleshed out, even though we don't spend a lot of time learning about their backstories. It's just the way that they're written and the way that Eddie talks about them. I feel like that's the sign of a really good writer. He makes you care about the characters and feel like they're real without pages and pages of exposition. So I don't know that how I would rank these the first four books. Uh, really, they're about equally great. They're exciting edge of your seat legal thrillers. And I am looking forward to starting book five. So I really do recommend if you like um, thrillers, whether legal, legal thrillers or just thrillers in general, that you check out Steve Cavanaugh's Eddie Flynn books. I think they're great. So I'll see you next time.